Welcome back to Tech Radar. I'm Matt Phillips, joined today by our senior computing editor, Matt Hansen. How are you doing, Matt? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Fantastic stuff. I'm really good, Matt, because today we are talking about the top five Chromebooks that you can buy right now. Very quickly, though, before we begin, let me just give you the rigmarole. If you're watching here on the YouTube channel, Tech Radar's YouTube channel, congratulations. You have the best experience for this video. That first link in the description you're going to find there is to Matt's full buying guide list. I think there are 10 Chromebooks that he lists out there, but we're just going to talk about the top five today. So if none of the Chromebooks that we talk about today suit your needs, head to that list and see if you can find something in there that does. I'm sure you will. Also, with those links in the description, you're going to find buying links to all the laptops that we talk about. Uh, they are affiliate commission links, and we are supported at Tech Radar by you, our audience. We very much appreciate you for that. Uh, but also, those buying links update automatically depending on where you are in the world and where the best deal you can currently find on that laptop is in the world. So uh, check out those links and see what deals you can find, obviously depending on where you are in the world and when you're watching this video, prices may vary from what we're going to talk about today. But without further ado, let's jump into the laptops we're going to talk about today, or Chromebooks, I should say. Actually, maybe we should start there, Matt. What is the difference between a laptop and a Chromebook? Why might somebody want a Chromebook over a laptop, potentially? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, basically, Chromebooks are laptops. So you've got the you've got the screen, you've got the keyboards, the trackpad, their computers that you'll you do a lot of the work that you would do on a laptop. But Chromebooks are special because they run Chrome OS, which is an operating system developed by Google, which is based on their Chrome web browser. And Chrome is by far the most popular web browser in the world. So I think a lot of people probably use this. And when Chromebooks first came out, they were very basic. It was basically just a big Chrome, you know, full screen window with Chrome running. Nowadays, Chrome OS is a lot more advanced. You've got a desktop, you can resize windows, you can have apps, you can install Android apps, and um, you can even install a version of Linux onto it as well. So, but, it, they're just really versatile devices now. But one of the best things about Chrome OS is that it, it remains pretty lightweight. With Windows 10, it's a big, complicated operating system, which means you need powerful components. Those powerful components are expensive, so it ups the price. They drain power, so it cuts the battery life, and it can make for a bigger, bulkier device. With a Chromebook, you don't need that kind of power to still get an excellent performance. So they are um, less uh, less powerful components are needed, so it, they, they're often a lot cheaper than Windows 10 laptops. Their battery life can be a lot longer as well um, and that's the main selling point really you can have a you know chromebooks which last you know a couple of days of work without really needing to charge so why you would go with a chromebook is if you're on a budget if you want to do some word processing you've got google docs you can also have microsoft word apps mm -hmm. if you want to do some web browsing of course you, you know they're great for that and if you want something which is affordable and has plenty of battery life chromebooks are a really really good choice and they're excellent for children and students because of all of those reasons and also they've got quite a lot of good parental controls built in and they're not as susceptible to viruses for example um, so good choices for those yeah uh, fantastic parents. stuff all right brilliant well with that all in mind then let's jump on to our number five pick the asus chromebook flip currently 799 pounds which based on everything you just said seems like we're at the top end kind of more expensive end of these chromebooks uh, but what cements this in at that number five spot map yeah, I think that's that, that's one of the most expensive Chromebooks you're you're going to really get. And I think the most important thing is if you compare the performance of the Zeus Chromebook Flip to a similar, uh, you know, a, a Windows 10 laptop of the same price, the Zeus will probably perform better because it might have similar hardware, but Chrome OS is so, so much more um, efficient at running on lower powered hardware that you're getting a really good experience. But I think the Zeus Chromebook Flip also shows that Chromebooks aren't necessarily always budget mm. devices. They can be really premium. They can have beautiful designs. It's a flip. So it, the Flip brand means that you can turn the screen backwards and use it as a tablet-like device. And as I said earlier, you can now install Android apps in Chrome OS. So, you you know, it, it, it then becomes an Android tablet almost, whilst then being able to be used as a, a, a laptop as well. And it's got, you know, a 1080p screen, really nice for watching netflix it, it does a really great job at that it's just it feels good it's comfortable to type on and work on it's got a fantastic battery life and yeah it, it's good it, it's good value when compared 
to Windows 10 laptops of that same price bracket. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm assuming then sort of that lighter weight OS like you were chatting about maybe makes battery life a little bit better on a, on a machine like this than sort of its Windows 10 counterpart. Am I right in thinking that? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. stuff. Well, like we said, Chromebooks tend to be on the cheaper side. Maybe the Asus is a bad example of that, but our next one certainly isn't. The HP Chromebook 14 is £239 currently, uh, which is an absolute bargain. So tell us a little bit about this one, Matt, and why it deserves to be in the number four spot. Yeah, you won't get a Windows 10 laptop this good for £240. No. You just, you know, there, there'll be too many cut corners. And to be honest, like, so this HP Chromebook 14, it has like a Intel Celeron processor. It comes with either two gigabytes of RAM or four gigabytes of RAM. You know, that's the specs where if you're looking at Windows 10 laptop, I'd say don't buy it. Do not buy it because Windows 10 will not run well. Chrome OS, however, runs well on this stuff. It's also got 32 gigabytes of storage. Again, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you're only going to be really using these machines for doing document creation. And because of their integration with Google Drive, it means a lot of your stuff is just kept stored in the cloud. So you don't really need that huge amount of space. But it is considerations. But if you're looking for a budget laptop, maybe the first laptop for your child or for a student, um, or just for if you just want something which is cheap and dependable and you can just, when you're sat on your sofa and you want to type away, this is a really great choice. And it's so cheap. It's just, uh, but nicely designed as well. Good build quality, HP, uh, you know, a trusted name in, in laptops and Chromebooks. And um, I think it's a really good example of just how good Chromebooks can be at this sort of very low price. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's kind of a nice halfway house between almost a tablet and a, and a laptop, right? In that, like, a lot of people like the idea of a tablet, something that's easy to surf the web with and that kind of thing, and that's lightweight, but they want that tactile keyboard. And so this is kind of the area you want to be looking in for that yeah, kind of product, definitely. right? Absolutely. So then moving on then to another flip Chromebook where you can use it as a laptop or a Chromebook, the Lenovo ThinkPad C13 Yoga Chromebook. Uh, tell us a little bit about this one, Matt, why it deserves to be in that number three slot. Yeah, so like the Chromebook Flip, this is a convertible Chromebook, so you can, you can flip it back using like a tablet. But it's um, it's got some really nice features, really good build quality. Um, the ThinkPads, they're aimed more at sort of like professionals. So this is something which if you want to do some work on, it's a really good choice. It's got some really powerful configurations as well. It can come with an AMD Ryzen 7 uh, 3700C processor, which for a oh. Chromebook, that's that's, that's that's pretty high end mm -hmm. up to eight gigabytes of ram so again you know even though chrome os works really well on lower powered cheaper lab chromebooks it does scale very well so it just works really smoothly when when you go for a bit more power and it just combines everything that we like about chromebooks so long battery life good flexibility you know dependable great build quality i think this is for like people who are looking for maybe like a business chromebook or a chromebook where they're going to do a lot of work on then this is a really good choice absolutely absolutely and I'll, I'll hurry you along because we're going from the high end of lenovo now down to the low end of lenovo with the lenovo ideapad duet chromebook so matt tell us a little bit about this one and obviously we know what sets the two apart right the specs and the price tag uh, but mm -hmm. lenovo dropping in here again what makes this one special in the number two slot? Yeah, this really blew us away when we reviewed it. It is a very cheap Chromebook, once again. Unlike the some of the others we've talked about, which, you know, are two-in-one devices where the keyboard flips backwards. Yes. This actually has a detachable keyboard, so it actually really does turn into a tablet. Um, and that is quite an important difference because it, when you fold back a laptop's keyboard to turn it into a laptop, a tablet-like device, it's still quite bulky. You can feel the keyboard underneath. To actually remove it, you've got this light device. And it's just so, it's, it's a really nice, compact Chromebook which can just do everything you really wanted to do when it comes to day-to-day -day stuff, but also doubles up as a tablet. And so 
in a way it's actually maybe like more for people who are looking for a tablet but want something which they can boost and, and turn into a productivity machine more so than a, just a normal cheap android tablet so it, it's a really interesting form factor you don't often see chromebooks like this but lenovo have really done some great things with it and it's just really nicely put together dependable great battery life it's, it's a really good choice for someone who who really is stuck between choosing between a tablet and a laptop this does both pretty well yeah absolutely and you know it's in that price point where if you were gonna buy a laptop but wanted that keyboard and so we're thinking oh do i buy an accessory like some sort of bluetooth thing that attaches to my tablet to turn it into this kind of device we're kind of already in that same ballpark figure right so this could very easily solve that dilemma for you if that's the kind of thing you're looking for and then finally we will move then on to the Google Pixel Book Go. And obviously all the way we've been chatting through saying, you know, Chrome OS obviously built by Google. So does having the device itself built by Google, is that what really sets this one apart from, from all the others, Matt? Yeah, I suppose in the same way that like uh, Microsoft Surface Pro products and sure. Surface products uh, are designed by Microsoft to showcase Microsoft's Windows 10, the Google Pixel Book Go and um, the older Pixel Book, uh, yeah, once again, they're supposed to be showcases for Chrome OS. These are supposed to be aspirational Chromebooks, which show consumers what's possible with Chromebooks, but also to show Chromebook makers, you know, that, hey, look, we're doing these great things, you know, take some inspiration from us perhaps unlike the pixel book which is was very expensive and i think maybe a bit overpriced for a chromebook and it came with hugely i think uh, overpowered specs really with the pixel book though google kind of toned things down a little bit so it's still got some amazing specs you know you can get up to a core i7 um, processor you can get up to 16 gigabytes of ram so you know powerful powerful chrome you know that'd yeah. be a powerful windows 10 laptop but it's a very powerful sort of um chromebook but it's it just runs chrome OS so well it is really nicely designed it's integrated if you've got an android phone it connects up really well with that and it's light and comfortable to carry around and it's got one of the best keyboards i've actually ever used on a, any laptop especially wow. chromebooks it's really comfortable to use it's actually the laptop that i use the most day to day i've got one and i just think it's brilliant i just really and it's got very long battery life once again you can close it leave it for a couple of days open it up you've still got battery life you can work on it for hours and still have plenty of battery life at the end of it it's just overall a, a, a great example of the possibility and the potential of chromebooks it is expensive compared to some other chromebooks not hugely so and once again it will outperform a windows 10 laptop of the same kind of price really i think if you, if you want a chromebook and you want something which is going to last you for quite a few years and will just be a great performer but you can work on it for hours not just because of the battery life but because of the comfortable keyboard this is mm. really the one to get it's it's great yeah, we keep coming back to, right, who are Chromebooks for? And we keep coming back to students and, and writers and those kind of things. And that's exactly all the things you're looking for, right? The comfortable keyboard, the battery life, the, the sort of easeability, the ease of use, and, and kind of not having to worry too much about the device itself. Yeah. It's exactly what you want from a machine like this. So it's good to hear that's all in there. Matt, before we close out, I just want to cover, is there anything coming up on the horizon that you think could, could shake this list up? Anything you're keeping an eye on? Um, no, I think we've, we've we've seen quite a few new Chromebooks get announced at CES mm -hmm. um, 2021. So um, they're kind of like coming through. Um, I think the Pixel Book Go is is probably due a sequel or something else. So I'll be sure. quite interested to see what Google does um, if it does have any plans. Um, for a successor but yeah it, it's an exciting time for um chromebooks i think because they're just so popular with students and in classrooms around the world and i think more and more laptop makers are now thinking yeah we can make some really nice chromebooks not just knock off a budget one mm. but actually make some really cool useful ones which are going to help people if they're working from home learning from home and so yeah it's, it's, it, i'm really excited to see what comes next with chromebooks yeah, and I think you're absolutely right, right? In the past 12 months, we've seen this obviously massive increase of people learning from home, students working from home. And so needing that sort of cheap and cheerful laptop, 
And so maybe companies now are, are looking at Chromebooks and saying, oh, actually, this is a really viable space now because people need this ability to work from home on the cheaper side. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens in 2021 with Chromebooks. It's worth mentioning, guys, obviously, that first link in the description once again. By the time you're watching this video, Matt may well have updated this article. Something may have been announced. Something may have come out. And this article may look very different. So worth checking that out to see the latest and greatest Chromebooks. But I think that covers everything, right, Matt? Was there anything else you wanted to chat about before we leave here? No, I think uh, the only other interesting thing with Chromebooks, which I should mention, is that Google, um, Google GeForce, Google, NVIDIA GeForce Now, um, which is um, the GPU maker's um, cloud streaming service, has now come to Chromebooks. So you can actually play PC games in a on a, a Chromebook. It does it by, by streaming from the internet. Um, but it's quite cool actually and with some games it's it's pretty novel having you know you can you can even fire up like cyberpunk 2077 and have a little a play of that um it, it works really well with real-time strategy games but it's just an extra sort of like string in the bow actually which shows that chromebooks are more versatile than people think and now you can use them without an inter internet connection as well which is one of my biggest complaints back when chromebooks first were announced you had to always be online luckily that's not that's not the case anymore fantastic stuff and, and like you say you know geforce now is one way google stadia obviously as well google own their yeah. own sort of game streaming service and yeah like you say it's difficult right now you have to have a good internet connection for those kinds of things but this was the same when netflix started way back in the day right people saying you can't stream hd video way back in the day when everybody was on super slow internet speeds in five ten years time I think it's just going to be the norm, right? To stream video games, at least some of them. So, um, yeah, yeah. so yeah, these, it's definitely a possibility to game on these things as well, albeit in a slightly different manner. Uh, thanks for joining me, Matt. Really do appreciate it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like. Subscribe to TechRadar on YouTube so you don't miss any of our future best laptops list. I think we've got a few coming your way, so I'm excited for it. But the only thing that's left to say is remember to head to techradar.com for the latest tech news and reviews, and we will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.